All right, welcome back. We're still going through basic JavaScript and we made it all the way down to iterate with JavaScript while loops. And that's where we're gonna start off today. We only have a little bit more to go, so should be good, should be good. Iterate with JavaScript while loops. Uh, so we're getting into loops now. A while loop is a loop that'll run like every time it meets this condition. So while i is less, or while i is greater than five, Actually, we're, we're going to do while i is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, we're going to do my array dot push i. And then we're going to set i equal to five at the beginning. And then every time it loops, we're going to decrement i by one. So then it'll run this about, I think, five times. It'll go five, it'll push five, and then i will be four after. And then it's still greater than zero, so then it'll push four on, and then it'll push three on, and then push two, and then push one. And it will also push zero, which uh, I want numbers five through zero inclusive. So that should be good. Let's try it. Yep. Iterate with JavaScript for loops. Here we'll use a for loop to um, push values one through five onto my array. So we're going to start by doing four. And then we're going to set a value variable called i, which is the index, or it's going to be the index. We're going to set it as zero um, to start. And then we're going to go while i is less than five and then i plus plus so for loops have the initialization stage so that's uh where you set your variable i equal to zero or you could set it to five or something and then the condition that it has to meet every time it runs so it's basically like a while loop for this part so like while i is less than five and then the final expression like it's just like usually you have i plus plus here so that it increments every time but sometimes you'll do i minus minus here sometimes i'll do i plus equals two here so then it like skips like two ahead every time but for this time we just want i plus plus and then we'll do my array dot push i plus one because we want numbers one through five and since i started at zero then i have to do i plus one so then it'll be one and then two then three then four then five um and also i did i less than five and not i less than or equal to five. So that's another reason why I did I plus one. Uh, let's try this out. Yep, iterate odd numbers with for loop. Here we wanna push the odd numbers from one through nine to my array using for loop. So here we'll do four, we'll go set our variable i to zero. Uh, actually, we'll, we're gonna set it to one and then we'll do while i is less than um, less than or equal to nine. And then we'll go i plus equals two. So then it'll go from one to three to five to seven to nine and then we'll go my array dot push thing and then i so there it'll push one and then it'll push three and then it will push five all the way up to nine and it should be good yep now we want to count backwards with for loop so we're going to push the odd numbers from nine through one to my array using for loop so here we're going to set um our first variable i to nine to start and then variable i equals nine and then we'll do i greater than zero or greater than one, greater than or equal to one. And then we'll go i minus equals two. So then that way it will decrement. And then we'll go my array dot push i. And I think that should work. So I'll start at nine and then it'll go seven, then five, then three, then one. And it will also run one because um, it's greater than or equal to. So it should work. Yep. Iterate through an array with a for loop. Um, for this challenge, we want to add all of these numbers together using this um, method. So we're going to use a for loop to do that. We're going to start at um, variable i equals my array dot length. Or no, we're going to start it at zero, I think, actually. Variable i equals zero. And then we're going to go i less than my array dot length. And then we'll go i plus plus. And then we're going to use the i as the index of the array. So first, let's get a total variable outside of here. Total equals zero for now. And then we'll go total plus equals um, my array index of i. So that way it'll loop through this whole thing since it's my array dot length, which is five. So it'll start at index zero and then go all the way up to index four and while incrementing total by that amount. So it'll add two, then it'll add two plus three, which is five, and then it'll go five plus four is nine, and then it'll go nine plus five. And yeah, that total variable is gonna be the sum of all of these. So let's try it. Yep. All right, nesting for loops. Um, this is how you access multi-dimensional arrays um, when you loop through them. Um, so I'm just gonna copy this over because I think they did a good job here. Um, so this should 
access every single number inside this nested array. And right now it's just console logging it, but we want the product of it all. So we're gonna go product, product times equal, and then that R I J, R index I and then index J. And that should work for us. Let's try it. Yep. Iterate with JavaScript do while loops. For the challenge, we want to make this a do while loop. We put the while statement at the bottom this time, and we start with a do, do, and then bracket right away. So right here, it'll push 10 on and increment it to 11, and then it won't run again because now 11 is, great, is greater than five and not less than five, so it's not gonna run it again. But if this was like one or something, then it would keep pushing until it was over five, but yeah. For the challenge they want it says 10 and it should work here yep all right repra replace loops using recursion recursion is a more advanced concept in programming i would say um it's where you return the actual function like again um but you also like have more conditions like added into it for the challenge they want us to write a recursive function sum rn that returns the sum of the first n elements of an array r so I'm guessing what we have to do here is have an if statement for the base case, which would be, you know, maybe we can just copy this over. That's what I'm guessing. And then instead of multiplying, just add. So yeah, um, and also change this to sum. So it'll take the array and then it'll take that array's index. It'll go from back to front, I think. Here, let's try this sum of array one, two, three, four, five, and then n will be five. And let's try console logging that. So I'm getting 16 here, but I should be getting 15, right? Maybe it's because we need to return zero here. There we go, now it's 15. So the reason why it returned one in this multiply function is because one is the identity for multiply. Um, zero is the identity for sum. So I think that's why. And I think it should work now. Yeah, the reason why they had it, another parameter here of n of five was like, say we had like six, seven, eight, it'll still only count the first five. That's just a way to say where to stop, I guess. Let's try this out. Yep. All right, profile lookup. Here's a free code camp little challenge here. It has to follow these rules and I'll do it quick and I'll show you when I'm done. All right, I think I got it here. First, first we have to check if this name is in the, the object up here. So we do that by doing a for loop and going through this contact list. We'll go through this one first and then this one. And we're checking if the profile.firstName equals that name that was passed in. So we're checking if um, this name is equal to the name that's passed in. And then if it is, then we want to push that contact. So then we're gonna push this whole object onto this uh, profile array that I just declared here. And then that way we know that there was a name that matched um, because if the profile.length is zero, so we actually didn't push a profile on it we just went through this whole loop without doing anything then it means it's still empty and we want to return no such contact and then if the profile has own property of this prop of likes then we want to just return that um, array basically so here likes does exist so we're just going to return pizza coding and brownie points um, but if that property doesn't exist then we're going to return no such property um, i think this will work uh, but let's try it out. Um, looks like I failed three of them. Okay, I think I found it here. I, I forgot that I switched profile to be an array. So we want to grab the first item in that array and then call has own property on it. Let's try that out. Oh, and also I want profile zero as well here. Now let's try it out. No? Okay, I found the problem. Instead of profile that first name, we have to do contacts of I first name dot first name, and then it should work. And I, I think I also needed these zeros here, so um, let's try it now. Yep, there we go. Heck yeah. All right, generate random fractions with JavaScript. This can be done with math.random. And all you do is call it, and then it creates a number from zero to one, and it's just random. It'll be like 0.55, or it'll be 0.33. Let's try it. Yep. Generate random whole numbers with JavaScript. So now we want to use math.random. Um, it gets us a fraction, but we want to return a random whole number between zero and nine now. So we're gonna go math.floor to basically floor whatever is given to us. So basically, since this is your between zero and one, math.floor is always gonna make it zero. So what we wanna do is multiply it by nine. And then it, what that does is it multiplies the fraction by nine and then 
math that floor brings it down to the nearest whole number. So let's say it, um, it becomes like 0.5, then times nine, it's 4.5, and then math that floor brings it down to four. Um, between zero and nine, not inclusive, so I think this should work. Let's try it. Nope, um, maybe this has to be 10. Now let's try it. Yep, generate random whole numbers within a range. Here they want us to generate random whole numbers within a range. <laughs> and so I think I can just copy and paste this part over here and just change the max and min to my min and my max. So yeah, it'll go my max. So let's say my max is 10 minus my min, which is would be five maybe. And that's five and it adds one, which is six. So math.random times six. And then it'll go plus my min, which is five. So it'll go six. So it'll get a random number between zero and six or zero and five. Yeah, between zero and five. And then it'll add my min, which is five, be between five and 10. So let's try that. Yep. Use the parse int function. We actually use this um, function a lot in JavaScript. We want to parse this int, or we want to parse the int out of this string. So it'll return 56. It'll return the actual number 56 instead of the string 56. And that way we can actually like add the number together without concatenating it. So yeah, let's try it. Yep. Use the parse int function with a radix. I actually didn't know that uh, parse int function had a radix. Um, <laughs> basically what it does is it um, has a second argument that you can pass into it. So the first one is the a string that you want to parse and then the second argument is like, so default is base 10 because our numbers are in base 10, but uh, for binary it's base 2 and then hexadecimals would be like base 16. But in, our, in this case, since we want to convert this binary string into a, a human readable number, then we want to use two here and it'll convert this binary into our base 10 form. So let's try it. Yep. Use the conditional ternary operator. Um, and this is actually really useful for React developers and it's actually not as confusing as you might think it is. And all we want to do is we want to check if A is equal to B and if they are, we want to return equal or we want to return equal else we want to return not equal. So we just start with our um, check first. If A equals B, then question mark is the like we're starting this. Um, if else statement. So if it is true, then we want to return equal. If it's not true, then we return not equal. Yeah, I think that's about it. It's actually pretty simple. You can write an if else statement that does the exact same thing, but it's not on one line. So um, having things on one line uh, looks better in my opinion. So let's try it. All right, use multiple conditional ternary operators. Um, in this case, you should never use multiple like chain together like this because it just looks horrible. In this case, you do want to use if, if else, else statements because do you really want to look at that for to do a simple task? No, but uh, for the challenge, we want to do it, I guess. So I'm just going to copy this over so I get the format right. And then we're going to check if um, the number is greater than zero, then we're, we're going to return positive. Else if number is less than zero, we'll return negative. And then else it equals zero, then we'll return zero. And that should work. Let's try it. Yep. Use recursion to create a countdown. We'll create a countdown here with recursion. And that involves returning the countdown function. So I'll just put that here right now. And then we'll add some extra stuff to it so that it works. So if n is less than one, we want to return an empty array. Else we want to have a count array that equals countdown of n minus one, or well, actually we're gonna start at n, yeah, n minus one. And then in their example, they did count array dot push. We're gonna do count array dot shift. We're gonna do count array dot one shift, the n number, and then return count array. So yeah, basically if n is five, then we're grabbing um, four, wait no, then we're grabbing five and we're unshifting on it onto count array. So it'll go into it and then it'll go down to four and then it'll go four, five, and then it'll go down to three, then it'll go three, four, five, and so on. And then at the end, it'll return the counter array. So let's see if this works. Yep, use recursion to create a range of numbers. So here they pass in the start num and unnum. And um, so in the example, it says range of numbers one, one, five should return one, two, three, four, five. And we should use recursion for this. So I'll do this um, here and then I'll show you when I'm done. All right, so I think I got it done here. So basically if start num equals end num, then it's just gonna return the starting number. 
um, like, like this one. So right here they're equal, so it should return four. Else, if they're not equal, then we want to increment start number. Then we're gonna call the function again, except with start number equaling one more than it was before. And we're gonna also push start number onto this uh, array. And then we're gonna return the array every time. So then each time this array is gonna get uh, one bigger. And then yeah, let's see if it works. Looks like it doesn't work. Um, let's try console logging some of these. We're gonna try a range of numbers and then one five. See what it gives us. Oh, five, four, three, two, one. So it looks like it's in opposite order, which is weird. I mean, I guess we could just do, instead of push, do unshift. And there it's seeming to work now. So I don't really know why it would be unshift instead of push, but um, yeah, recursion does some weird stuff sometimes. So I don't know, whatever, let's try it. Yep. All right, there we got successfully completed the basic JavaScript um, part of free code camp. Next up we're going to do the ES6 challenges and that should be a lot of fun as well. I'll see you next time. Bye.